Will the end of Brexit mean the end of the Tory party? I'm Mike Cashman, author of Everything You See Here, or co-author, the CDs, Brexit's a musical trick, I don't beg pardon, I'm talking bollocks from the Rose Garden, half price at £5 until the end of February. I'm the co-author with Augusta Lees of It's My Party and I'll Lie If I Want To, the book with links to 120 videos. But this video is about will the end of Brexit mean the end of the Tory party? And there's good reason to think that it might do. Uh, I'll give you my view um, within this video. And by the way, before anybody says, Mike, why are you supporting the Tories? I'm not, this is, none of this is about what I think ought to happen or what I want to happen. This is what I think will happen. It's prediction. I could be right, it could be wrong, we'll see. But here's the question. Will the end of Brexit mean the end of the Tory party? There's all sorts of reasons why it should, as Brexit is increasingly discredited as time goes on and it brings no more benefit. And if it is implemented further, if there's further divergence, it brings further problems. Tories have been closely associated with Brexit. Will the discrediting of Brexit mean the discrediting of the Tory party? And will the Tory party die with Brexit? And by the way, that question arises whether Brexit has a quick death with a relatively rapid rejoining process for the UK to rejoin the EU. And when I say relatively rapid, I know that it takes some years. Um, or does it apply even if there's a slow death of Brexit so that there isn't a rejoin in the next few years, but Brexit is increasingly discredited, causes increasing problems. People want less and less to be associated with having had any idea uh, or having had any support for it. Uh, so a rapid death or a slow death of Brexit, both could discredit the Tory party. So will the death of Brexit, the end of Brexit, mean the end of the Tory party? I don't think it will. Remember, I'm not supporting this, I'm just predicting. The Tory party has proved itself enormously flexible over the centuries uh, and able to trim its sails to the wind uh, and to adapt to different popular views. And a prime example of that actually is in 2016 when a vote to leave the EU, which many people have interpreted as much of the electorate wanting to put two fingers up to the current government in 2016, was seized upon by the Tories as, right, OK, well, if that's what 52% of you want, then that's what we'll implement. And they correctly identified, eventually, that with Boris Johnson's uh, popularity and ability to convince people initially that he knew what he was doing uh, and with a slogan of get Brexit done that in marginal constituencies that would have a significant effect uh, and bring a Tory majority in 2019 as it did. Uh, so that showed, rightly or wrongly, enormous flexibility. You may say well hang on Mike that doesn't help because that's just associating them more with Brexit but it's an example of changing tack. Another example is they had a policy in 1987, uh, the poll tax, which turned out to be massively unpopular. Within three years, they had ditched the leader and all the new candidates for Tory party leader were proposing to change the poll tax. So the Tory party can change direction. Will they? I don't know. And if the Tory party want to survive this process, then of course they have a narrative that they can appeal to because they can say, well, we didn't necessarily support Brexit, or we didn't necessarily think it was a good idea, but we saw the referendum result and we wanted to honour the will of the people uh, and therefore to get the best Brexit possible, bearing in mind that vote. I'm not saying that's true. Obviously, there could have been a much less damaging Brexit, but it's a narrative that may get them some support. So it's a basis whereby uh, some Tories, who are not completely discredited, may be able to say, look, I did my best. I was trying to be democratic uh, and, you know, I think that'll be part of the narrative when some part of the Tory party, some part of the existing parliamentary party, um, after many of them have been thrown out, seeks to make a resurgence. Now, I don't know whether they'll manage that effectively uh, during the next term of government, which we expect to be a Labour government, uh, or whether it'll take a further electoral defeat before they'll really reflect upon the error of their ways. But 
looking, as I say, at the history of the Conservative Party, I do think that they have the flexibility and the realisation of the need for change in order to take the steps that they may have to take in order to be electorally successful again. It would be a brave man who would bet against there being a future Tory government, as I say. I'm not saying I want that, I just think that it's likely. Um, after the next election, when many of the old school Brexiters will be out of Parliament, they'll have uh, ousted Rishi Sunak because he'll have lost a, an election, uh, and there is new leadership. Uh, as Phil Morehouse of a different bias has pointed out, they'll have to decide fairly quickly on a new direction. Who will there be who is not discredited by the deceits over Brexit, by the misbehaviour at Partygate, and in fact what personally I think is much worse, the um, stealing of millions of pounds for crony contracting and damaging public health and causing people's deaths. Um, somehow Partygate seems to loom larger in the public's consciousness. I don't quite know why. But anyway, who will not be discredited by that? Now, there are some Tories who are not discredited. Um, I don't think. There's Ben Wallace, for example, Defence Secretary, who didn't enter the leadership contests in uh, 2022 because he wanted to concentrate on defence at a tricky time for uh, European security. I'm talking of security, there's the security minister, Tom Tugendhat, uh, who I think has been uh, reasonably impressive, competent, well-informed in his TV interviews. So I don't know whether the Tories will start to be to seek to rejuvenate themselves quickly or slowly. If they did it quickly, could you imagine after the next election, after a big defeat for the Tories, for example, Tory leader of Ben Wallace uh, with Tom Tugendhat as uh, shadow foreign secretary, could they be going in a new direction? Now, they need to think, of course, about the, or the Tory party need to look at their membership in the country um, with the increasingly ageing demographic. Uh, they need fresh blood in there somewhere. Uh, and, you know, that is probably a root and branch re-examination of how the Tory party is constructed and supported uh, and its membership. But they have shown significant flexibility in the past. And so my view is, based on history, I think the Tory party will survive the discrediting of Brexit. But... Do talk about this. Uh, do give me your comments in the video. Do talk about it to friends who vote Conservative. What's their view? You know, you can ask the open question. Um, we don't need to adopt a particular opinion on this. We can ask them uh, how they think the Tory party will survive or whether it will or not and what the Tory party needs to do. Uh, let's have that discussion with people who are Tory supporters and see what they think. I think it could be interesting for them. Anyway, do give me your comments, as I say. I'm Mike Cashman. Um, I told you about the stuff. Uh, do support the channel. Uh, subscribe, tell your friends, share the videos, uh, and do buy our book. Thank you.